Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to do a step-by-step -step video of how to change acoustic guitar strings. I did another video. I actually did that video for my mom. I was just briefly changing strings and kind of talking stories. So I'll put that up top if you guys want to watch that. But this is going to be a full step-by-step -step of how to change acoustic guitar strings. A couple of things you're going to need. Strings for sure. I use Diodario, I might be saying that wrong. Phosphor Bronze, this is medium gauge. I've used these strings forever. This is just what I like to use. Uh, I used to use light gauge. It really depends on what kind of guitar you have. This is made out of lighter wood. So if you use light gauge, you know, sometimes you, you get too quiet of a sound. So I like to use medium gauge. This is my favorite brand because I just feel like overall you get a warm sound out of it. It's neutral enough to where you can pull the sound that you want out of it by what you play. Uh, I had Martin strings one time. Uh, I hated them. That was just me. They were very choppy, bitey, sharp. It's like they never wore in. Um, I had Earthwood strings one time. I, di I didn't really like those. I, I have used Elixir strings. Those are really nice. Uh, they're expensive because they last longer. So I really just keep coming back to this and this is really all I've used. I'll put a link in the description for that. This is a 10, uh, 10 set box of this. Someone, um, and it must have been someone from our YouTube channel sent me this and I didn't know who it was because it just come like from Amazon. So if you are watching this and you sent me these strings, thank you very much. I think it is more economical to buy them in big sets. I usually buy them in sets of three. Let me see if I can get these open for you guys. You're also gonna need you're also gonna need a set of cutters of some kind to cut the loose ends. So I just use these. Um, they work pretty good. So we'll pull one of these out. I'll get a close up here for you guys. So one thing I really like about the Diodario is they're all in the same package, so you only have to open them once. Other strings, sometimes each string is individually packaged uh, to tell you what they are, but I like this because it just goes by color. The little knock that's on the string that you'll see in a minute, it just goes by that and it tells you exactly what it is. Um, I'm not sure why that's there. <laughs> it should really just be those. Uh, B, E, A, D, G, B, and E, and it just shows you all the colors, so there's no way that you can get it wrong. So they come come in a nice package. Um, it's also nice too, this is like fairly heavy plastic, like if you try to rip a hole in it, well that looked like it ripped really easy, but typically it's hard, and that's nice because when you take them out, they kind of tend to zing out, and you have to be careful because you don't want to get poked in the eye or anything like that. Yeah, but they just come well, and you can see all the little colored knocks there, and that will tell you which goes where. But before we actually change the strings, one thing I just want to say is this is just how I change them. There's different ways to change them. Everyone does it differently. This is just my method. But this is the way my grandpa taught me years ago. Um, anyone who's been to the channel before knows that we grew up in a musical family, and really the nucleus of that was our grandpa. He used to play music with his brother uh, and then he played music with his son which is our uncle that we still play music with. So he, t he taught me how to do this years ago. This is just how I like to do it. I probably played for several years before I could change my own strings because I would take them to either him or Paul and say, will you change these for me? And he was really sweet. He was kind of old fashioned and he would say, let me change this for you, doll. I don't want you to hurt your hands. And so I remember one day I went down to his house and uh, he was sitting in his chair where, he, where his recliner, where he always sat. And I said, I want you to teach me how to do this. There's gonna be a time where I have to do this. And so I got out a little piece of paper. I still have that somewhere. I think it's in my case. I ho hope I kept that. And just took detailed notes, like step by step, this is how I do this. So uh, that's a really fond memory for me. Okay, so another thing you're definitely gonna need is a tuner so you can tune as you go. So I go, I change my strings from the outside in. So I change the E, then the E, the B, then the A, the G, then the D. Uh, I will say, if you can help it, you don't ever wanna take them off all at once because it can warp the neck. Um, it could be bad for the nut too because most of the time, mostly what keeps that nut in place is just the pressure of the strings. Um, 
also it's just easier for me if I go one by one to where I put the E string on, I tune it. I put the B string on, well, put the top E first, tune it, and I go step by step. If I were to just take them all off, besides the fact that it could be bad for the guitar, you would really have no starting place to tune. Because sometimes, you know, you'll be tuning after you put your strings on and you'll think, is this the right E or do I have to go a whole other revolution? Uh, and it helps if you have other strings to base it off of. Also, I do think it's easier to change them standing up if you have a place where you can lay it out like this. Most of the time in the past, I just sit in a chair and do it on my lap, but then you have to be careful about not dropping the guitar. So if you have a place like this, something to just support the head, it is much easier to change them like this. So I also, guys, just have a cloth here. Um, it's good to have your guitar like maintenance, take it to a luthier, um, or if you know how to do it yourself, to get them to clean it really good and polish the fretboard. I actually had that done recently, so I'm not that worried, but I just keep an old bandana in the case because as I take one off, I'm just gonna kinda go down it and get any sticky stuff off, any dust, anything like that. So before we start this, the first thing that we've gotta do is, we're gonna do the bottom E string there, is we have to let this down. And I know most people probably know this, but I wanna do this step by step um, for beginners, for anyone, to where it would be really easy for them to uh, learn how to do it. So you would never want to just pull the peg out or cut the string under that much tension. A, it would probably fly off and hit you in the face, and these strings are very sharp. But B, that could definitely damage the guitar. So we're not going to do that. And they make little um, they make little tools for this. Uh, I just I just. I, I just prefer not to use it. I, I don't really know why, but they make little tools and it's just like a little cap that goes on this with just a handle that that's, that's about that big for you to turn it. I've just never used them, so, so that's not a problem, but that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna let off the top, uh, the bottom E string, what I call the bottom E string, this one, and then we're gonna let off the top E string. You can take those two off at a time, but I wouldn't take any more than two at a time, so here we go. And I'm just going to take it and turn it. And of course, you just turn it the opposite direction of the way it's going, which is counterclockwise. And you just keep turning and turning. And then you'll see, see how loose that is? Uh, we're going to go a little bit more. But when it kind of pops off like that, I don't know if you guys can see that well, but you can pull it through. I'm going to go a little more. You can just kind of pull it. I'm going to go a little bit more. There we go. I was going to say, sometimes you can pull it through, <laughs> sometimes you have to keep going. So, now that you have this, most of the time you can just pop the peg out, but sometimes with the heavier, the bigger strings up here, sometimes you almost have to take the knock and push it in and pull it out. So, be really careful with these, don't lose them, but two, I put them, I lay them down kind of in the order that I'm going to use them next. So since this is the bottom E string, I'm going to lay this on the bottom. And when I take out the top, I'm going to lay it at the top. Uh, I think there's a difference in them. And so I've just never mixed them up. I've been really careful too. So these also, the ends are sharp, especially after they've been, uh, been taken off and they're all jagged like that. What I do is I leave these until I have more and then I wind them back up just like this before I put them in the trash so no one reaches their hand in there and gets poked or anything like that. So here we go with the top E string. When your strings are dead, this is usually always the first one to go. Oh. Speaking of dead strings, uh, how do you know when to change your strings? I think that's a good question. I'm actually gonna leave that one for you guys so we can get a uh, up close view of that. All right, guys, I wanted to give you a close up view of what I was talking about. Sometimes the pegs don't always come out. This one did come out, but see how the, the strings are set down in there. See how the knock is, like the whole of that little knock is horizontal, right? If you were to stick a piece of wire through it, it would be horizontal. That's how they sit, just straight down in this hole like that. And then this peg right here, you can see is grooved. And then, which we'll, we'll talk about in a minute when we put them back on, but then that groove pushes that knock down in there, and then you can pull it tight, and it's locked in. So sometimes those won't always come out, and you have to, we'll do it again. 
sometimes you have to push, see how that'll give a little bit? Sometimes you have to push it down in there to get this to come out. Not always, but I wanted you guys to be aware of that. So how do you know when to change your strings? It really depends on how much you play. If you only play a couple times a month, you can leave those strings on there for a while. But when we're playing a lot, I might change them to every two to three weeks. Like if we're playing a lot, and especially in the heat, I'm not sure what it is about the heat, uh, but when you play outside and it's really hot, even if you have new strings, like it zaps them immediately and you might as well get rid of them. That's been my experience. So I change these pretty often. Um, I'm actually making this video today because we have a gig tomorrow and I want to have new strings. Okay, now that I have these off, this is a good time to clean. I just take a cloth, this is just an old bandana, and I just wipe it. I, I You know, you don't have to be too crazy with it. But like up here next to the nut, sometimes dust and stuff gets in there. And once you've got that off, it's just easy to just wipe it down. All right, so these are the old strings. You want to just set those aside. Be careful. Don't want to get poked with them. So here are our new strings. Now this is when you have to look back at that uh, color, color code down here to make sure you're getting the right one. So I'm going to do the bottom E string first. So for me, that's silver. And when you unwind these, be careful because um, they tend to spring and you don't want this to hit you in the face. Okay guys, I wanted to do an up close for you. So this little knock sets kind of horizontal, what I would call horizontal. If you were to stick something through it, it would go through horizontally. The eyes are going horizontally. We're gonna use the grooved side of this peg. That's really important. It has to go on this side. And you just kind of, sometimes these are hard too. You see it wants to go that way and you just have to make it stay the right way. And you're just gonna stick it in that little hole and use the peg to push it down. And then once you have it pushed down, I leave my finger over the peg and just gently pull up. And you could hear it there, it clicked. If you pull this too hard, you could warp it. So you can't pull too hard, but I just give it a little tug up and then it's ready to go up the neck of the guitar. Okay guys, now we have to get slack in this string. If you were to just take it all the way to the top and start winding it um, with no slack, you would have a big problem, you can't do that. So my grandpa kind of taught me this. Uh, I just kind of put my thumb under there. It's probably like an inch of space. I'll also uh, zoom out and give you guys a different uh, view, but I just wanted you to see this view as well. What we also have to do is make sure it goes through this slot right there. You don't want it to slip out. And so what I do when I start turning is I usually take, um, well, actually, I usually come across and use my left thumb like that, and then I start turning this once it's through. Uh, once it gets mostly tight, like down here on the rest of the fretboard, um, it'll stay in place, but you want it to stay. You don't want it to come out while you're trying to wind it. Okay, guys, I wanted to give you another view of the slot. So I've threaded it through the hole up here, and you can turn these to get the hole where you need it. I'm going to leave like that much slack. That's like about an inch. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to hold this with my left thumb and turn with my right hand. And you want to be very careful about the way you turn. You've got to turn it clockwise. It's got to go the right way. And what will tend to happen sometimes is as you make a revolution, this part will try to go under um, what feeds, feeds in right there. You can't have that happen. So if it does that, you just pick it up and move it so that doesn't happen. Okay, once it starts getting tight, is when I take the tuner um, and I go ahead and tune it as I go because if not you'll have a bunch of strings that are new that sound really crazy because they're not in tune and you don't want to do that. You want to keep it easy and tune as you go. As far as how fast on turning, don't go mega fast but you can turn at a decent speed. Just be gentle about it. So, that's why I like to leave strings on it. It's out of tune because one's new and one's not, but I can play the E and the B string and I know what that's supposed to sound like. So, once you're confident it's right, you take your cutters, be careful. You don't want to be banging these against the headstock or anything like that. Just carefully reach in, get as close as you can, and just cut it. 
These are also very sharp. Set them all in a place together so when you get ready to throw them away, none of them get dropped anywhere where you might step on. So we're gonna change our top E string. It is brass, so we're gonna find our brass colored knock. And again, just be careful when you unwind these like that. So we're gonna get our, and I just lay the extra ones out so they don't get warped. So I'm gonna get a close up for you guys. All right, guys, so I wanna give you another close-up of this. Remember, it's important, this little knock has to go in horizontally, meaning that the hole is going that way. Sometimes you have to work with it and, and try it a couple times, and remember, that grooved side has to go with it. So I'm gonna put that in the hole and use that to push it in. Now, that felt kind of funny, so we'll see. You wanna pull up the, to where you hear it like that. And you can kind of check and see. Sometimes, honestly, though, I'll do it again. If I, if I, It should feel like one smooth motion. And if it does not and it sticks like it did the first time, I think it's worth pulling it out and trying it again so that way you don't get to the top and then realize, uh-oh, my peg has come unseated. So we'll try that again. Okay, so I've got it threaded through the top here, and we're going to do the same thing. We want, like, that much slack. And guys, don't get too worried about the slack. I mean, as long as you leave a decent amount, it's gonna be fine. You just don't wanna pull it all the way tight and do it, and you don't need like this much slack either. I just like stick my thumb under there like that. So this time, since I'm on the other side of the guitar, I'm gonna hold with my right hand. Um, and it will, I mean, you're, you're gonna feel it kind of slide through that groove, up through the nut and into the peg there, that's fine. You're just wanting it to stay put. And you have to move the string sometimes so it doesn't go under, that's fine. I'm gonna turn it till it gets tight. Okay, lay it back down. And it's good if you have something to just kind of support the neck like that to where it's not completely touching because if so and you're kind of bearing down, you're kind of pushing a lot of pressure uh, on the neck like that and you don't wanna do that. So, we're gonna tune up to E here. So again, we're gonna cut, be careful getting these in there. And just set it aside. All right, guys, now we have the bottom E and the top E done. So we're gonna do the B string and the A string next, and then we'll do the G string and the D string. So you guys do the B string and the A string, and I'll meet you back there. Just remember, do one at a time. I would do the B string, then the um, A string. You can let them out and take them both off and then just start with the B string. So we'll loosen this one, and we'll loosen this one, and then I will meet you guys back, and we're gonna change the G string and the D string, because there's just one little difference about them. All right, guys, so we've got our B string and our A string changed, so I wanted to meet you guys back here for the G string and the D string, because there's some one thing that's just a little bit different that we have to do. So, let's start with the G string. We're just gonna start taking them out just like before. The only thing that's different is that we have to leave more slack because it'll go on further up the headstock. All right, guys, so we're taking out the G string and the D string. And like I said before, really the only thing different with them is we're gonna leave a little bit more slack because they have to go all the way to the top of the headstock. Take these out, lay them down in the order, however, whatever that means to you, so you can put them back the right way, back in the holes that they go, that's what I mean. You can just take these two at a time if you want and just wind them, or wind them a couple times so nobody sticks their hand in the garbage can and gets poked with them, and set those aside. This would be a good time for the cloth. Just wipe everything just a little bit. So we gotta get our thing back that tells us we're gonna do the G string first, and that is green. Be careful on these middle strings. I, I think it's because they're in the middle. For me, they're the easiest ones to mix up, and I've definitely mixed up the D string, put the D string where the G string went, and vice versa, and that is not good. You don't wanna do that. So I always double check. I've used this brand of string for so many years that I don't really need this. I know what color goes where, but I always look. Just to be sure, so I don't waste strings. So, 
We're going to pick up our peg again, and remember, we're going to put that little knot horizontally. We're going to take the uh, grooved edge there, and we're just going to push it down, give it a quick pull up. Now, when we take it through the top up here, we're going to leave just a little bit of extra slack because it has to go all the way to the top of the headstock. So we're still going to use our finger to measure, but we're going to leave just a little more, about like that, because it's got further to go. So get it on, and remember, we turn these clockwise, and then the other ones go counterclockwise. The E string, the B string, and the G string are the ones that go clockwise. Then the D, A, and E go counterclockwise. And you'll be able to you'll be able to see that because when you take them off one by one, you still have some to go by. But you want to make sure you don't turn them the wrong way. All right, we're going to turn that till it gets tight, about right there. And then we're going to get out our tuner. And tune it up to G. All right, guys, so we've got our D string. Again, we're just taking that little knock horizontal. We're going to take our grooved end. We're going to push it in the hole. Give it a little tug. I might do that one more time. You want to hear it pop. You'll hear a little like click when it gets to the top. Just like that. That's what we like to hear. Now we're going to send it through the top. And we're going to make sure we have a little bit extra slack because it's got further to go. And we're going to wind it counterclockwise. Making sure that this does not go under this part that it's already wound. We can just pick it up and move it as we go. We're going to wind until we get tied there. And then we're going to use our tuner to tune it up. the top all right so we now have all the strings changed they're gonna slip because they're new strings if you play them for like 30 minutes straight most of that will stop um, but if not it might take a couple days for them to just kind of wear in uh, and stop slipping they are gonna sound kind of tinny because they're new so they're gonna have a little bit of a punch that will go away some people really like that sound uh, I tend to not like it. Uh, it just sounds really choppy and bitey, but once they wear in, they'll sound less like that. So at this point, you are good to go. You can just tune it, keep playing it. Over the next couple days, they will wear in. Uh, again, this is just the way I do it. This is not the end-all, be-all way. There's lots of different ways that people do it, but I really hope that you found this video helpful. When I first started out, I just wanted someone to tell it to me step-by-step step because I was pretty intimidated about uh, how to do it, what goes where, how many strings do I take off at once, but it's really a pretty simple process. Please leave us uh, any questions that you have in the comments if you have questions. If you enjoyed it, you can uh, let us know in the comments. If you did enjoy it and you have not subscribed, uh, please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate you guys. We hope that you enjoyed this, you got something from it. Uh, God bless and we will see you at the next video.